you could quite easily be forgiven if you thought we were in outback Queensland or maybe even Arizona but we're not we're in Kazakhstan high five and uh, we're on the road uh, we've unexpectedly come across this place here and uh, I don't know too much about it except I do know that it has been used as a movie set so uh, I'll catch up with Elena she's been speaking to our Russian driver and uh, she knows all the story but uh, I don't I'm afraid so we'll catch up with Elena and find out exactly where we are and what we're doing here No shortage of uh, camels in Otara. I've just, just learned that that's where we are. And we've got our uh, driver up here. Um, he's explaining everything in Russian to Elena, who's passing bits and pieces of information on to me. So it's Otara, which was the capital between the 9th and the 18th century. So it's the capital of this area here. So it's a kind of an old city, um, it hasn't been used since 1750 we think, but uh, Al-Farabi was born here. Now who's Al-Farabi? Some philosopher, great thinker, um, that's all I know about him, except that I did notice that one of the streets in Shimkent was called Al-Farabi Street. So. Anyway, we'll continue on and see more of Otara. And right here is the very first original gateway to the city. So, the 9th century this was built. And uh, it's still standing. And I'd say, just by looking at the terrain, that might be partly because it's a kind of a dry climate out here. I feel right at home. So the, when the armies of Genghis Khan came through here, they attacked this city and trashed it. This is one of the cities that uh, Genghis Khan conquered. So the people that built this city would have been Turkish origin, or what we now know as Turkish people, and of course uh, the Mongols. Where, uh, I think that's where the Cossacks come from, the Cossacks, the current people here. So, as you can imagine, at these gates, just out there, one day, people woke up to see thousands upon thousands of Mongol horsemen out there in those paddocks that have now got camels grazing in them. But uh, I think that would have put the fear of anybody in it waking up to find that in your front yard. Din was just explaining to us that the current Kazakh people, the original people here were Slavs apparently, um, and the Mongols came in and the current Kazakhs are a mixed race of Slavic and Mongol people. But uh, the people that were baying at these gates here by their thousands on their horses they were 100% Mongol. And now we can see the walls, the remaining walls of the, the dwellings and other buildings inside the city, behind the city walls. So, uh, what is that? 1100 years ago. This is how people lived. And uh, up from up here, you can see a long way, kilometres and kilometres. So when the Mongols come, they didn't sneak up, they would have been spotted 
but what do you do? Clearly outnumbered. You can just imagine people, men on horses, screaming out to you, threatening to kill you all. And not just threatening, but actually meaning it. Carolina was just explaining to me that we we're walking through their houses and I understood that and I was just uh, wanted to ask Adin how much they would sell for it does he think because granted they are a little bit of a fixer upper but the foundations are good something to begin with um, the rooms are small and uh, got a couple of pigeons have moved in by the looks of it <laughs> funny eh? Domestic pigeons are way out here in the middle of, really, really is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we drove for hours to get here and a couple of little villages, but um, no cities out this way. We're we are a long way from what major civilization. But uh, just to imagine over a thousand years ago, these walls here, people living in them. And um, I'm just actually standing inside one of the houses. And uh, yeah, strange to stand here. Imagine, and it's made out of straw and mud. And for it to survive all this time. Unbelievable. So this is a bit of an archeological gig here. You see that they've, they've dug down. So that's the land of today up there and as you come down as you know you the deeper you go the more time has passed and uh, Elena pointed out that there's a lot of bones here and uh, I reassured her that they're animal bones but um, yeah obviously this is the area where they just tossed their dinner scraps okay so these buildings here also inside the city. Uh, they've been renovated a little bit, I'd say. Although Ardin, our, our driver, was saying in his terms that these are still ancient buildings. They've just been uh, preserved. So I'm not exactly sure how old these ones are because I know there's a, it's a long, long time frame that this city was a city. And uh, we, we started off at the oldest part. This is obviously a lot newer. This is an archaeological site that's protected by a big roof and uh, yeah some of these walls are there uh, falling apart a little bit but it's amazing how uh, some places can survive and here we have the newer with the very old right at the front door And this is the inside of a dwelling. Looks quite comfortable. You can see the uh, wood-fired stove there. And uh, in the background, fortunately we can't go in, but in the background you can see more of how they lived. Okay, so we managed to break in. It wasn't terribly difficult to break in because um, they didn't have any locks back in those days. Perfect opportunity to walk around and have a look. Oh, they've got the big old rug on the floor. Oh boy, it's cool in here. Just standing outside, it's probably about 32 degrees outside. Uh, a wooden sh chest. But in here, I'd say it's about 24 degrees. Much more comfortable. <laughs> So basically, every room has its stove. Every room has its stove, and every room has its sitting area, which is basically a, a rug on a half. But, uh, yeah, can't get over the, the coolness in here. It's wonderful.
Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, the bedroom. I'm going to call this room here because we haven't got a table and chairs, but I'm saying that this is the dining room. And uh, it's very nice and cosy. I think we'll take it. I think we'll take it. I've just got to find the toilet and the shower and the, the laundry. But uh, anyway, I'll keep looking. And this is me poking through the open window and seeing inside the very large building. So this would be a, a luxury residence. I'm sure if there was somebody around, there'd be somebody telling us not to come in here. But as there's nobody around, we'll have a quick look. That's a, uh, a stove there without the top on it. Just a hole, you put your fire hour underneath it. But this is a this is a large building. Or it's either that or it's might be a number of dwellings under the one roof. This one here is the remains of a 14th century mosque. Quite a large building. Not much of it left. It's a 15th century mausoleum or crypt. So that's where you end up if you live in this town and you end up dead. And all the people, of course, that lived in the 15th century here are now all dead. Um, but I'm not sure they all fit in there. But uh, the door's locked, luckily for me, because I don't fancy going in there. And 14th and 15th century, this was the uh, palace of the main man. It's the palace of Berdybeck. And uh, the rooms in here are places where people would come and seek judgment from the top guy, the Khan. I suppose the English version of Khan is king. And uh, yeah, so this is what 15th century palace was like. They're not totally lavish as far as the size of the rooms, but quite large. Now we think of it as a palace. I suppose he had the run of the place and he couldn't come here without permission or whatever. But if you think of it as like a I don't know, council chambers or community hall where all business was finalised and conducted, it's not that big after all. Another angle of the palace. And of course now, in this day and age, we can walk through the wall. But that wall there is a lot older than the 15th century. That one goes back to a thousand years ago. That's the uh, original city wall. Now in this dry, what seems to me to be a pretty dry place, looking at the palace from the outside, you can recognise here that there's a little place to have a drink. I'm wondering where the water source has been. And I think we found it. This would be the well. And I don't think if you fell down there you'd ever be seen again. Because it's you cannot see the bottom. You cannot see the bottom at all. And the tin just dropped something down there and you can't hear it either. The deepest well I've ever seen. Sorry Dale, did you, you, what can you see? I can see the bottom of the well. Oh you can? How deep yes. would you say it is? This is the place they filmed the movie Kopchevnik, or in English, Nomad. I haven't seen the movie, and I looked for it. Is that one of those places where you keep your prisoners? Zindan? Zindan? 
And some walls here. Oh, nice ass people. A thousand years to go to build this movie set. Just four of them people. I didn't even know about film back then. I don't know how they they, were, they obviously had uh, had some thought and foresight into the future. This is uh, this is real. So uh, they might have made a movie here, but this wasn't built for the movie. I think the front part that we're heading towards, I'm going to think that part was built for the movie. But um, these walls are definitely old mud. A couple of dwellings here. What have you found? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Oh, I know, that's something. It's a very dark room. Yeah. It's amazing, as soon as you walk in those buildings, the drop in temperature, you feel it straight away. And what's it called? Sinjan, is that what that is? No, it's not Zindan. Not no. Zindan. Maybe it's something for the insulation. Oh. Inside. And that's the stairwell to the keep of the castle. Can't get in there, there's a iron gate that's kind of wired up. I was about to say locked, but wired up is more accurate. It's going to be difficult to, to unwire it, but I think we've done enough breaking in here of dwelling houses today. And I've always wanted a moat, but uh, this place has got one. Look at those walls, and they've got the timber sticking through it to give it more reinforcement. That's the original walls of the of the city. And this is where the movie was set. And yeah, yeah it's quite a good fort. I'll tell you what, old mate, you're lucky you're a camel, because uh, it is very dry here. I can feel my lips cracking, but uh, I suppose that doesn't bother you, eh? And there's the walls protecting the city and that's the actual point where the wall was breached and the Mongols entered and then history was changed okay and there's a 50 meter tunnel down through there and it's connected to the water supply and um, they also had saunas down there banyas and uh, it's part of their culture back then. And this was their bathhouse. So when I was looking for their bathroom before, I found it. It's a little bit far away from the place that I was interested in. It's a bit of a walk. Interesting pattern there in the tiles of the bathhouse. But yeah, you can see the, the pools and uh, where you can sit and relax and keep cool. Very nice. Help us grow, like, share and subscribe. Okay, darling, so we've sitting out here in front of a very interesting building and we're told that it's a very old building like um, from the 6th century maybe or 7th century and uh, Adin told us the story behind it what can you tell us because he spoke to you in Russian so if you can just translate it for us 
Right, um, Mohammed had a friend, or should I say companion, whose name was uh, Arstan Bob. And um, one day Mohammed gave him a stone, like a stone from a uh, apricot. And um, it was some kind of, it did have uh, some religious value. So he kept that stone, according to the legend, he kept that stone in his mouth for several years. And then um, when the other person arrived, whose name was Abyssalai Ab 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 Ogoi or something like that, I have to double check that name, he gave it to him. And he became very smart and uh, um, educated man, um, writing poems. So in that sacred place, they uh, they put um, uh, a lot of um, a lot of poems written by that man. And uh, as you can see in okay. front of us, just, on, just... The, on the left hand side is the mausole mausoleum, is where buried Astan Bob with his uh, students. And on the right hand side, there is a mosque where they pray every day. Where they do mosque things. And they're currently doing mosque things. And yes. Adin is actually in the mosque at the moment. And um, we're just waiting patiently and then we'll head off. Because he's our driver and he won't let us take off in his car. <laughs> no.